wonderful people out there, Kevin from CC Pipe here, where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives. The topic today is search and replace, or find and change, which InDesign calls it. But not any search and replace, today we'll be diving into grep. This will be a bit of a longer one, and in part two, we'll look into even more grep, but in paragraph styles instead. But grep, maybe you're already familiar with it, or maybe not. Either way, it stands for Global Regular Expression Print, but that doesn't help as much. I actually had to look that up. It's basically a code language that we can use to search or, so to speak, target text that we otherwise wouldn't be easily able to do. And why should you bother this very technical feature in your creative work? Well, as I tend to say, the quicker we can do repetitive tasks, the more time you'll have left over for being creative. The use cases are many, everything from changing dates and updating numbers when updating old print jobs, to full-on formatting a whole price list with spreadsheet data, all without any manual tweaking. Also good to know is that regular expression is a larger thing that exists outside the creative Adobe world, but that's what I'm familiar with. So let's look at how to use this great feature in InDesign. As you probably can see, this is InDesign. To access the Find Change window, we can simply press Ctrl F, and then up here, there are different tabs. As you might have guessed, we want to switch over to grep. Now we can search and replace as we normally would, but using grep syntax instead. Also, just for the sake of clarity, let's just go through how the InDesign search and replace works. We can tell InDesign what we're looking for here, and if we also want to replace it with something, we just write it in here. Simple enough, right? Then we can press Find Next, see that it does what we want, and then press Change, and do it one by one, or just press Change All, and hope for the best. Make sure to also toggle the More Options here. This reveals the option to specify or limit our search to certain paragraph styles and character styles as well. Very useful. Clicking on the at sign here gives you a menu with all these search items. If we compare this list to the, um, the normal one under the text tab here, you can see that we have a bit more options under grep. And that's because it has, let's call it grep functions in there as well. This menu is your best friend when using grep. It means you don't need to learn any syntax by heart, but that's enough talking though. And let's look at my example that I've prepared for you. Here's a document that I set up for this. The thought was for this to be like a product list with my tutorials, just to give me some content to work with. We have these cards with thumbnails for the tutorial. There's three pages, just some different color themes going on. And what we are missing here though is the product or tutorial description. But I have linked text boxes set up here for all of them. The data I have in Excel. And the text I want is in these three columns. I'll just select this and we copy it. I also have a cheat sheet here so that I remember how I wanted to do this. And I'll just leave it here to the side like this. Just adjust these windows a bit and we go back into InDesign. Now, I've, I'll paste all of it in the first text box. So far, so good. The rest we will do with search and replace. First adjustment, just some general cleanup. Excel gave me a space before the euro sign, so I'll take that away by simply typing in the characters, just space, euro sign, space, and change that into euro sign, space, and press change all. When we paste in from Excel, we get tabs between columns and paragraph breaks with a new row. So that's something we can now work with when formatting. To start us off, I want to add a paragraph break after the channel name, the first column here. And I want to do them one at a time so that we can use the other tab to identify the next thing. Now, the pattern I came up with to find the first tab was this. Before the tab, we could have any characters really, so we can use match. And how these work is that we specify something that has to be or not be before or after for it to be a match. And here we want positive look ahead. And that's found here in the list. Then we type in what we want inside the parentheses here. Any character is a dot and that any character can be repeated one or more times. That's a plus. And I found that shortest matched uh, worked best and that's a question mark. After that, we have our tab, that's just backslash T, and I'll just write that in. To exclude a tab that we don't want, uh, this one over here, I sold it with a negative look ahead, which I'll find here. That means it's only a match if whatever I specify isn't there. And after the tab that we don't want is a euro sign. I find it helps when 
doing these things to read out what you've written. So what we have here is behind, we have any character one or more times and a tab and not a euro sign after it. That will leave us with finding the first tab right here. Then we press change all and now we have done our first step. Next, I want to apply the correct paragraph style to the second row. Now we only have one tab left, which is after what we want on the second row. Therefore we can write any character, a dot, one or more times, a plus. After that will be our tab. So we choose positive look ahead and write in tab, which was backslash T. Then we click here to choose which style to apply to our match. So I'll select this one, name. We run this and yet another step closer. Now we want to get the price on a new row and that means switching out the tab to a paragraph break. These I've used enough to remember them. So that would be backslash T and then just change that into a backslash R. Run that as well and there we go. The last paragraph style to apply would be the price. And how do we find the price? Well, first we have digits and here we have one or two. So we go backslash D for any digit and plus for one or more times. Then there is a comma. Um, I ended up using the Swedish decimal system here, which we just write as it is. You can add a backslash before it to indicate that you do not want any potential gref meaning, but just a simple character. In this case, it won't matter though. After that, we have two more numbers. So we write in backslash D two times and select the style we want here, price, and then run it. Now we only have one more problem and that is that it doesn't go to a new frame after the price. So we want to add a frame break after that. We can once again use the number. So we go positive look behind, behind what we want to change will be any number, a comma, and any number two times, once again. After that, I see that there is a space and then a paragraph break. So we write in space and backslash R outside of the parentheses. To this, we want to add a frame break. So we keep the paragraph break with backslash R and then go to the list, find break characters and frame break, and then we run it. And there we have it, all formatted and correctly placed without manually touching it. Now, this example took some time to get through and with only three pages, maybe it would have been quicker just to adjust manually. But it won't always be just three pages. And also, if we ever do this again, we can reuse this and even save them as presets. So keep that in mind. This was only my example of what you can use this for. But I find that the best way to learn these things is to get a base like what I showed you now and then start playing around with it yourself, trying what works and what doesn't and when it doesn't figure out why. And also learning to identify the situations where it can be useful. That's enough rambling though and thank you so much if you made it this far. In the next video we'll be looking at how to include this in your paragraph styles as well. Hope to see you there. As usual, thank you so much for watching and uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It helps me out a lot and also if you have any productivity questions or suggestions for future videos, make sure to throw those in the comments below. Once again, thank you and until next time, have a good one.